Knights fans, and welcome to another edition of the Knights Baseball Roundup. I'm Ty Mead here with head coach Gary Puccio. Coach, big weekend over Central Connecticut, three out of four. Split a doubleheader on Saturday and took both on Sunday. Story of the weekend was the pitching and the defense. You won three times, each time by one run. What did you see out of your team defensively this weekend? Well, you know, when I came here, that's one of the things that, you know, we said we would change right away was the defense and, and – uh, they played superb this weekend. I mean, we got Maddie back, which was a big plus. Maddie went back to shortstop. Bobby moved back over to third, and you know they turned a couple of double plays that were absolutely incredible. And and uh, like I said, three one-run wins, and I think we got one earned run in every game from Central, and our guys, you know, made play after play. So and like you said, the starting pitching, it, it was just a a typical what I consider a typical FDU baseball win that low scoring, key hits. Great defense, solid pitching, and that, I think that's what we got this weekend. We focus in now on game one on Saturday. Matt McCann's return to the lineup. He goes three for four in that first game, and you get an outstanding pitching performance from Tim Quinn. What would you see out of those guys? Yeah, Timmy, I'll tell you what, since we put him in the rotation, he has stepped up something fierce. I think he walked one and struck out five, something like that. He had just a great outing and, and – you know, the kid's money in the bank. He's been terrific, and uh, hopefully he'll continue to do that for the rest of the season and on, and onward. I mean, we're starting three freshmen in our starting rotation, and, and I think two of them are five and three, and one of them is four and two. I mean, that's, you know, you got 14 wins out of three freshmen. That's pretty darn good. Now moving on to the second game on Saturday, it's 8-4 setback. Uh, offensively, you did some things. Could have hit a couple home runs. What would you see out of Chris Cashmar in that game? Yeah, Chris got a little tired. I mean, you know, Chris has been giving us great outings. He's been pitching in the starting rotation since February. So for a freshman, that's, you know, a long season. And we've also let him go 120 pitches a couple of times, which was probably my fault early on. But he's solid. I mean, he's still, you know, even even a so-so performance by Chris was, what, three runs in five innings? I mean, he's still pretty solid for us all the time. Um, hopefully he'll bounce back this weekend because he's definitely a, a main guy for us. And on Sunday... First game, you put Logan Fratty out there, and he delivered as he has all year. Seventh win of the year, 3-2 to two victory for the Knights. Is there anything left to say about Logan? Yeah, you know, he, he didn't have anywhere near his best stuff, <laughs> and yet he wins. I mean, the, the kid's just, you cannot teach a kid how to have that kind of ferocity and, and, and just bulldog mentality of that you're not beating me. I mean, I have my best stuff, but you're still not beating me, and it's just a credit to him what he's done for us. And, and uh you know, he's obviously the leader. And arguably the best pitching performance of the weekend came in the final game. Corey Zell, another one of your freshmen, delivered in a 2-1 to -one victory. What did you see out of him? Yeah, another another great thing that since Corey's gone into rotation, it, you know, he's pitching better and better all the time too. And the one thing I love about Corey, he's got a little bit of Logan in him. He's got that, that look in his eyes that, you know, you're not beating me today. And it's just... It's a great feeling to know that the, those pitches are going to keep us in the game. I mean, that's an incredible starting four. They have been sensational all year long for the most part. Like I said, when you get 14 wins out of freshmen, and then you got seven wins out of Logan, you know, that's a, that's a, a main reason why we're sitting at the doorstep right now. Offensively, what are you going to look to do going forward into this weekend with LIU? Yeah, you know, I, I thought offensively we did a decent job. We, we got to do a better job of uh, men in scoring position, especially moving runners over. I mean, I don't think we've done a great job with man on second no out or getting that guy to third. That's something we got to improve on. And then getting him home with less than two out, you know. We, you know, we, we, we could give ourselves a little room for our pitches, too, that if it's a 4-1 lead instead of a 2-1 lead. And, you know, 2-1, every play is crucial. If you can get it to 4-1, all of a sudden you got a little bit of leeway. And before I forget, I also want to mention uh, Evan Lane on Sunday coming in. You know, another freshman who came in at a key spot, man on first, two out in the eighth, up two to one. Two left-handed hitters. They pinched hit for the first one. He struck the kid out and then started the ninth inning, got the first guy to fly out, and then we turned it over to Dylan for the save. So, I mean, he was a major factor in that game. He did a great job. He's another good young freshman that's going to help us down the road. So it's a lot of good things to look forward to down the road here. Moving ahead now. You're in third place in the NEC, 14 and 13 record, 24 and 24 overall. 24 wins, by the way. I don't know if you know this. It's the fifth most in a season here at FDU. So congratulations on that, and plenty of time left for you to your, you and your team to continue moving up that list a little bit as you go into the final weekend and then into the playoffs. What do you expect of the LIU Brooklyn Blackbirds this weekend? You're going to play them a doubleheader Saturday, doubleheader Sunday. 
Well, you know, they're battling for a playoff spot, too. So, you know, it's not going to be easy. They're not going to roll over and quit. Obviously, you know, Alex does a good job with them, and, and they're going to come to play. They're a tough team. They've always been a good, aggressive team against us. There's always been good games and close games. So, you know, nothing's easy. I mean, uh, I think we're sitting where if we split this series we're in, and there's also a lot of other ways we can get in. But, but uh, you know, we got to do what we got to do. I mean, one of the things I tell the kids all the time, split on the road. So if we split on the road like, like you're supposed to, we should be sitting in good shape. So, One other thing that happened on Sunday prior to the game, we had a senior day celebration, 10 graduating members of this class. What do those guys mean to this program? Well, they're the ones that changed the face of the program. I mean, you know, Pat McClough was my first recruit here, and, and Pat, Shane, and Ryan McDonald, so, you know, if we could make the playoffs again this year, it'd be three times in five years. FDU hadn't been in the playoffs in 12, 13 years before we got here. So I think that's a credit to them that, you know, Pat definitely has been the face of the program. He was the first recruit. He's a terrific catcher. It's, it's incredible how well he works with the pitching staff. And, and, you know, Shane, Ryan, I mean, Joel. I mean, we, we've had terrific kids. Dylan Sprague. I mean, I'm going to forget a couple, but, but they are very special to me because they were my first group. They were, my, they were the kids I brought here to change the program. And they certainly, as they look back over the years, as they get older, they're going to be able to say to their kids and everybody that, yeah, I was one of the ones that made a difference, that FDU became a respectable baseball program. Because I don't think anybody can ever say that this is no longer a respectable baseball program. It's a, it's a very good baseball program, and those players are a big reason why. Looking ahead now, many of the teams in the league, in fact, all of the teams in the league will have another weekend of conference play. After this one, you have a bye the final weekend. How are you going to utilize that time to kind of set yourself up if – or when you're in the conference tournament? You know, it's a little bit disheartening because you, you're sitting around and you don't know for sure that you're in. Uh, you know, that's going to be a little tricky, and you got to hope on other people beating other people, which, you know, you never want to have to depend on, even though, you know, most of it's probably like a long shot of something happening that would hurt us, but you just never know. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to give them a couple of days off while we wait and figure out what's going on. So we'll probably take Monday and Tuesday off, get back to work Wednesday, Take it, you know, slow for a little bit. And then next week, obviously, go hot and heavy if we're in the tournament because I believe we would play on Thursday the 26th. So my goal is to get there. And then once you get there, it's a new season. And, uh, you know, we got to do the job of getting there. We got to finish the job. I mean, we're very close to finishing the job. But it's not finished yet. And I think, like you said, the kids winning three out of four this past weekend against Central was a, a major step in getting us to where we want to be. So, you know, I mean, uh, barring something very strange happening, we should be in pretty good shape. All right, Coach, thank you very much for your time. Good luck this weekend against LIU.